Hello, 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 hi, are you there? Is there anybody there? Hello, and welcome to Trivia Tuesday. Yes, it's that time of the week again where I choose a weird random subject. Well, maybe not a weird subject, but a random subject. And I tell you lots of trivia facts about that thing. So my name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. My website is jasonnewland.com. All my recordings are on there. And I've got a Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group. And that's it really, I can't think of anything else. So, this recording will be six different versions, three without music. So without music, five hours and ten hours. With music, five hours and ten hours. So six different versions. And today, I'm going to focus on trivia trivia tuesday trivia tuesday we're going to focus on the wheel the wheel wheel so what have i come up with oh let's have a look i didn't know this i didn't know this the wheel I mean, I guess this this is something that's, I imagine a lot of people would probably agree, potentially agree with, it's one of the greatest inventions in a, in a sense of how it's transformed society, you know, historically, possibly one of the greatest inventions According to this, the some of these, by the way, it might not be factual. I'm not going to fact check anything. So if it's wrong, it's wrong. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm just going to read it out anyway. So the earliest evidence of the will dates back to around 3500 BCE in Mesopotamia. Okay, I'm just pleased I was able to say that word. Is that. Oh, is that near Los Angeles? I don't know. The first wheels were used for pottery, not transportation. Ah. So the idea that a wheel was invented and then used for uh, like a horse and car or whatever. No, it was used to make pots. Ah, so the potter's wheel was invented before the wheel used for carts or wagons. Which is just another way of saying what I've already just said. <laughs> The oldest wooden wheel discovered is about 5,200 years old and was found in Slovenia. That's near Texas, I think. And I wonder if it's still in use. How do they know it's 5,200 years old? Did it have a date on it? An expiry date? Did it have a receipt in an envelope next to it? I mean, I don't know. A price tag? Early wheels were solid discs made from a single piece of wood. Oh, I mean that that 
that does seem to fit in with the, some of the historic stuff that I've seen. You know, horse and carts, wagon wheels. They all look like they were just a bit of wood. Yeah. Oh, spoked wheels appeared around 2000 BCE. Spoked wheels, greatly reducing wheel weight. Would wheel weight be an issue though? What? How that, what uh? I suppose. I suppose if you were riding a bicycle and the wheels were really heavy, it might be harder to pedal, maybe. I don't know. I've never pedaled a bike with really heavy wheels. To be honest, it's been a while since I pedaled a bike. So, the wheel and axle mechanism is an example of a simple machine. The wheel and axle mechanism is an example of a simple machine. Okay. I don't really know what that means. Well, I know what it means, but I don't know what it means. The next one. The wheel was not used in some ancient civilizations like the Inca Empire. Why? Maybe they didn't know about it. I mean, there's parts of the world that didn't use electricity, wasn't there? They didn't know about electricity until the electricity person told them, whoever was in charge of electricity. Ancient Sumerians are credited with inventing the first wheeled vehicle. I don't know what a Sumerian is. Did they... I think they live near Hawaii. Uh, I'm not sure. And uh, now, the next one is the wheelbarrow. A single wheeled cart. I know what a wheelbarrow is. Was invented in ancient Greece or China. Well, make your mind up. They're very different places. One's in China and one's in Greece. Different places. It's not like... Um, not like saying, oh, one was made in Japan and the other one, one was made in um, London. You know, two places are quite close. Greece and China, that's... that's a, that's a fair distance, I do believe. In fact, you'd need a wheel to get there, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, the next, the next one. Wheels were initially attached to vehicles using fixed axles. I don't actually know what an axle is. I'm not very good with cars. The only axle I know about is uh, Axel Foley. Axel. Is that the... No, because it turns, doesn't it? That's the thing, it turns. How, how would it be on a fixed axle then? How did it turn? Maybe it didn't. Maybe it just slid. They had oil, always sort of put oil in front of it. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they needed to change. Maybe for the, we need to change, make a change to these wheels, because this fixed axle is okay, but it only goes down, only goes downhill. Doesn't work any other way. Perhaps if we were able to rotate the wheels, maybe. I don't know. The first wheeled chariots were used. 
in warfare around 2000 BCE, whenever that was. Chariots. So I didn't know that they were used in warfare. I thought it was more kind of for games. Do you remember Chariots of Fire? It was... Mind you, I don't think there was any wheels in that one, was there? It was just people running around. I'm not sure. But I'm just trying to think of, like, Ben-Hur... And yeah, I don't know. Hmm. So the invention of the wheel was crucial for the development of transportation. Well, yeah, kind of obvious there. Rubber tires. Rubber tyres were invented in the 19th century by Charles Goodyear. Is that true, though? He must have been one of the richest people on the planet if he invented rubber tyres which have been used by billions of cars since the invention. How much is that company worth? Because Goodyear tyres still exist, don't they? Wow. Blimey. Pneumatic air-filled tyres were invented by John Boyd Dunlop in 1887. Dunlop. That's a famous name as well. I thought they made paint. Didn't Dun Dunlop make paint? Maybe they did that as well. It's a pharmaceutical, no, pneumatic, sorry, air-filled tyres. I personally never really understand. I mean, maybe it's a weight thing. But just have full rubber tyres, no air. You can't get a puncture. It would just be what? Why? Why have it full of air? Just have it. Just full. F just. Just have it, as it is, full rubber. That's my invention. Spoked wheels revolutionised transportation by making wheels lighter and faster. I mean, now thinking about it. Would it really slow a car down to have wheels that were just all rubber? Would it make that much difference? Maybe it would. In Roman times, wheels were often made with iron rims to increase durability. Huh. Oh, okay, yeah, so I just realised what they mean, rim. So I had a bit of a rim job done. And, because, do they have, oh, rim, that's the bit in the middle, isn't it? That's the bit around, around the hole of the wheel. Because I guess, originally, it didn't, the wheels wouldn't have had a hole, would they? If they were full rubber. Or maybe they did have a hole. And there was no rimming there. And then. They put it in. To yeah, to make the wheel stronger. Okay that makes sense I suppose. To increase durability. I still think complete. Forget the, the rim job. Just have complete. No air. No blowing, no rim job, just rubber, completely all the way through. That makes sense to me. I don't know why, it just does. 
because then there'd be no punctures, no accidents, well, less accidents, you know, and people wouldn't get stranded in the middle of nowhere because they drove over a, I don't know, a prick on the road. So yeah, or a spike or something. Bicycle, <laughs> bicycle wheels are an evolution of the spoked wheel. Okay, well, I, I've never seen a spoked wheel outside of a bicycle. That's the only spokes I've ever seen. No, gen genuinely, you might think I'm lying, but it's true. I don't think I've ever seen any wheel that has spokes other than on a bicycle, like a moped, motorbike, bicycle, you know, that kind of thing. A bike. Early wheels were attached directly to axles and did not rotate independently. Okay, well, they already covered that earlier, didn't they? They said that it didn't rotate. Ball bearings, which allow wheels to spin smoothly, were developed in the 18th century. Again, I didn't... I suppose... Yeah, because I guess you have to like, have that mechanism, don't you, in order for the wheels to turn. Yeah, I don't know much about how cars work. I mean, you have to, like, press on or something, start, and um, press some buttons and steer and things, but that's about it. How the actual thing actually works I mean I don't know I don't know much about cars um, I clearly know even less about wheels the ferris wheel is a famous amusement ride first introduced in 1893 so does that mean the ferris wheel was around before the car Right, the next one, caster wheels, often found, oh yeah, caster, I don't know what that was, now I do, caster wheels often found on furniture, allow for multi-directional movement, I mean you get them on trolleys, don't you, shopping trolleys, which means you can, I mean I haven't, I've not been into a supermarket and used a shopping trolley for years, but when I did, I do recall it, them not being the easiest things to manoeuvre. Goes right when you want to go left. Goes up when you want to go down. Goes backwards when you want to go forwards. Very much like my brain. Uh, so the wheel has been essential in the development of gears and machinery. Fair enough. The modern steering wheel for vehicles was introduced in the early 20th century. Hmm. The modern steering wheel. So what was the old one? What was the original one? Anyone? Was it just a stick? It might have been just a stick, mightn't it? Just like left, right. 
Wow. I mean, I've never, I've never driven. I do know what a steering wheel is. You know, there's lots of things I haven't done, but I know what things are. Not, not all things, but some things. Next one. Many animals, such as hamsters, use exercise wheels for stimulation and exercise. Here's a story. When I first got Andre, there is this one of my friends friends kind of got to know him a little bit and he got Andre a present and this was the time when I used to keep Andre in his cage not all the time just at night and he bought him a hamster wheel now bearing in mind Andre was tiny at the time so it wasn't too small for him at the time he was probably the size of a hamster maybe probably smaller than a hamster actually but I tried to say to him not Andre but this this bloke he's not a hamster he's a ferret and he said well, what's, what's the difference it's just it's the same I said no it's not the same he said, yeah, it is. I said, it's not really. He said, you keep him in a cage, yeah? I said, you keep a parrot in a cage. You keep a lion in a cage. They're not the same. He said, but do you want it or not? <laughs> I said, okay, thanks. And he kept asking me, how's, how's he getting on? How's, how's a ferret getting on with, um, he used to say, call him Andy or Andrew. How's Andy getting on with the, uh, with the wheel. Is he still using it? I said he's never used it. Why? Because he's not a hamster. And he couldn't get it in his head that. Ferrets. Cannot be. Pacified or pleased. By running around on a wheel. Well in my experience. Of course I'm not an expert. But I lived with one for six and a half years I kind of figured out at least Andre he was not interested in that to mindlessly do anything he always did stuff with a purpose he did he knew what he wanted and what he wanted to do and he did it and the idea of him running on a wheel for no reason was not going to happen and it didn't happen he didn't touch it. He didn't like it. He didn't want it in his in his uh, cage. In fact, I think at one point he said, "Tell your friend, why doesn't he run on the wheel?" I said, uh, "Yeah, but he's not a hamster, is he?" And Andre said, "Well, neither am I. Neither am I." And I said, "Look, come on. I know that. You know that." He just doesn't seem to understand that you're not a hamster. He said, what is it? What is it about me that makes him think that I'm a hamster? Oh, probably just because you're little and furry. He said, so are your balls. I'm like, just, he said, I'm talking about your tennis balls. They're little and furry. I said, okay. This is supposed to be PG. He said, I know. I just did it as a joke. I said, all right, Andre, stop it. And then he went, <laughs> he used to do that, he used to make that sound when he was angry. <laughs> Honestly, he was, sometimes he'd let a stink off if he got angry. There was one time, I don't even know what it was that triggered him, but he, he jumped up into my lap and I cuddled him and he was like, he was angry about something. So I think I was cuddling him and he let off a pong. And it was the worst. Honestly, I had to chuck the t-shirt away. I couldn't even wash the t-shirt. It was that bad of a stink. Like a skunk. I had to, <laughs> I had to chuck the t-shirt away. It was awful. 
that's not even an exaggeration. I remember when I first got in this big cage. So it was very early on. It was after probably a week or so of having him. And I, I, I put him into the bedroom. And I built the cage. It took me a while. I didn't read the instructions, of course. And he made do with it being upside down. And I opened the bedroom door and let him walk in. And he, even though it maybe had been two weeks, a week, because he escaped from the other little cage he had, he bent all the the metal bars back and bit through the wood. <laughs> he didn't want to be in there. So this this cage was really really large but he didn't like it and he just walked around it and sniffed it and he kept going whoosh, whoosh. angry so angry didn't like it at all eventually he's sleeping there like during the day and it leaves the doors open and he'd be in his hammock and he'd, he'd loved it in there that was his that was his place and then it got to a point where he never went in there at all. He had so many, so many different places where he'd sleep around the flat that the cage was almost just ignored. A okay, cage, okay, that was loud, wasn't it? Occasionally he'd go in there, but I got very excited there suddenly. So the phrase reinventing the wheel means wasting effort on a well-established idea. Yeah. I kind of knew that. The water wheel was an early source <clears throat> of my voice going. The water wheel was an early source of mechanical energy. I'm just trying to think the water wheel. That would be... The kind of thing that you'd see in a windmill, wouldn't it? And that was also used for. That was the that was kind of the first thing that was used, like for pulley systems and use water and the power of, of water and stuff. Very clever. The water. Okay, the segue uses gyroscopic did you hear that whistle then gyroscopic technology to stay balanced on two wheels i didn't understand hardly any of that the wheel and axle were used in ancient egypt to grind f grain into flour The wheel and axle were used, not just ancient, well, wasn't that the whole thing about windmills? They would turn grain into flour, didn't they? Isn't that the whole, what that was for? No? So the ancient Egypt did it first. So how did we discover it then? Some wheels were originally made with stone, for grinding purposes. Grinding. Grain. Into flour. It always said. It is going back over itself. So the next one. Invention of the wheel. Allowed for the development of plows. And agricultural tools. I mean a lot of this is factual. It's not very entertaining is it? Oh you mean. Wheels were used for tractors. Next you're going to say they were used for bikes. Were they used for cars? Were they used on planes for landing? Ooh, were they used on toys that were needed wheels? Ooh, ooh, were they used for skateboards? Um, what else? Were they used for... It's just like... Yeah, some of this is just so obvious. 
toy wheels have been found in agricultural digs, indicating their use in ancient play. Ooh. The unicycle has only one wheel and requires balance to ride. It's like the blatant obvious. This isn't interesting. The only interesting thing about the unicycle is why. Why? It's the most ridiculous thing possibly ever. It, it is. Oh, come on, come on, be honest. Can you tell me you think the unicycle was a good idea? I've got a story about a unicycle. A unicyclist. In London, I was a part of London, and this unicyclist used to ride around on his big, massive unicycle. You know, it's really one of those really big ones. And he'd ride around on a London road. Busy, busy London road. And this is both kind of tragic and heartwarming at the same time. So he gets run over. That's the, that's not the heartwarming part. And it's like, I think the bus doesn't see him. How? I don't know. But he ends up underneath a bus. Now he survives. So it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's not the heartwarming part part either I mean, it's the positive part the heartwarming part I mean the ridiculous part is the fact that he was on a unicycle on a busy London road is he doesn't he doesn't deserve to be hurt but he deserves to be not allowed to ride it I mean this is ridiculous it's it, it, it's just yeah I can't think of many things that are more ridiculous than that. Swimming with sharks, that's probably one of the things that is just... Skydiving. Why? Bungee jumping. It is... I, mean, I remember once a bungee jumper, the person forgot to attach the other the other part of the the rope or the spring or whatever it was. It's like it's tragic. It's like just don't don't do it in the first place, and you haven't got to, got to remember. I was it? There was a bloke that. Oh God, I mean, something about a parachute. But anyway, there was um. Oh, the heartwarming side part of this story. Loads of people, like now, loads of people would probably stand around and take photographs and film it for social media. But this is before social media was around. Loads of people lifted the bus off him. I mean, I don't know if they tipped it over. I mean, the, the bus was empty. They didn't, like, tip it over and suddenly... 30 people were trapped. No, it wasn't like that. Everyone got off the bus. Which meant it was probably a bit lighter. Or quite a lot lighter, I imagine. But they lifted the bus off of this man. I think the bus may be on his leg or something. And he survived and everything, so it was, it was a happy ending in that sense. But the heartwarming part is like the fact that all these people got together... And synchronized and lifted this bus. And I don't think anyone can argue that buses are probably quite heavy. So I was, yeah, that's the only story I've got on unicycles other than they're just ridiculous things. Absolutely ridiculous things. I can't believe anyone thought that was a good idea. I got a great invention. What is it? What is it? Well, do you know the wheel? Yeah, it's already been invented. You can't invent the wheel. 
I mean, it's, you know, I, I know, I know I've not invented the wheel, but I've invented something that uses the wheel. Oh, all right, what is it? Oh, it's going to be a bicycle. Well, why don't you, the bicycle already exist? No, 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 no. This only uses one wheel. But don't you need two wheels to balance? Uh, no, no, it, it takes a bit of practice. But if you really put in the effort and learn to balance, it's fine. It, it's okay, it's really, it's, it's okay. You could say that about tightrope walking. I mean, you can get yourself used to eating poison if you eat it in small amounts over a long period of time. You can get yourself immune to it. Well, yeah, I don't know. That's what I've been told. Well, I say that's what I've been told. Let's move on from that. Anyway, uh, no one eats my meals anymore. So, it's a really rubbish invention. No offence, whoever invented it. Ferris wheels are named after George Washington Gale Ferris Jr., their inventor. Now, I'm sorry, but George Washington Gale Ferris Jr., that's a silly name. Before you start, what do you mean George Washington? No, no it's too many names, that's what I mean. One, two, three, four, five. Five names, no. You only need two names. A middle name, but you don't need to use the middle name. And junior is never needed. It's never needed. We don't do that in this country. It's not needed. It's not, it's not, it's not needed. Stop it. Please stop it. <laughs> See, my granddad was called Edward. His first son was called Edward. My grandmother was called Eileen. Her first daughter was called Eileen. It wasn't Eileen Junior. It wasn't Edward Junior. He didn't call himself Edward Senior. She didn't call herself Eileen Senior. It was just Eileen and Eileen. Oh, with my granddad, everyone used to call him Ted. Apart from me, well, yeah, we used to call him Granddad. And his kids called him Dad. But his friends and everyone called him Ted. And my uncle Eddie, or he, they called him Eddie, not Edward. But his name was Edward. But not Junior. Never Junior. Just Edward. So, yeah. That's a bit of a bee in my bonnet, wasn't it? The wheel has been symbolised as a cycle of life. It's also like what we do and what we've done in this country is the third. George Arnold the fourth, whose father was George Arnold the third. And that's a very kind of uh, royal family thing, isn't it? So yeah, we don't the the working class people don't do that. The wheel has been symbolized as a cycle of life in many cultures. Yes, that's true. Buddhism is one of them. I think Hinduism as well. Wooden cart wheels were often bound with metal hoops for strength. Which is just the whole rim job thing again, isn't it? But on the outside rather than on the inside. So instead of rimming the hole, it rimmed the outer part of the wheel. Which kind of makes sense to me. It's a bit, that, that makes sense. It's a little bit like putting horseshoes, you know, those metal horseshoes on a sh horse's foot. It is kind of that, I guess that would be the equivalent. I imagine it's noisy, but definitely would keep it sturdy. 
So early na early Native American cultures used sledges instead of wheeled carts. Oh. I suppose if that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. As long as the horses did the job, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I imagine you wouldn't be able to, to carry such a a big load. Imagine a wheel wheels will be able to do a much larger load than the like a sledge. I don't think a sledge could deal with such a big load. Because the wheels, I don't know, just it just it seems like that would be able to a bit more well, I just I don't know. I might be wrong, but it seems like that would be more correct. Rotary wheels are used in water turbines to generate electricity. Which is kind of a similar thing really from the whole dams and stuff isn't it dams I'm sure one of my girlfriends used to she used to go and she did to buy herself a dam how can you buy a dam they're huge things I like I go shopping I've got to get some I've got to get a dam like what I never understood that I mean if you could afford a dam why can't we afford to get a new house I mean, they've got to be huge, huge amounts of money. The term wheels is slang for cars. Ooh, street. How street. The term wheels was slang for cars in 1952. Wheels are central to many children's toys, from toy cars to spinning tops. Yay! The invention of the wheel led to the first long distance trade routes. I mean, where do you stop with that though? The invention of the wheel led to, and then anything that involves a wheel at any point in history after the wheel invent was invented, you can say the invention of the wheel led to that. So the invention of the wheel led to me getting a taxi home from my dad's in August because the car had wheels and if the car, if the wheel hadn't been invented, we couldn't have made that journey. You know, how, 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 how far are you going to go with that, that sentence? You know what I mean? You get me. The word wheel comes from the old English word hoof. Hoof. H W E O L. Hoof. Okay, I think they made that up. Early wheels were likely made from tree trunks sliced into discs. Do you reckon? Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That that might be how it worked. I don't mean to be facetious, but I'm thinking that probably was, you know, someone's cutting a tree. This is so annoying. It keeps rolling away. <laughs> Every time I cut a bit off, it rolls away. Or... Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's like keep people kept dragging trees, like and it's just so hard to drag. And then one day, someone tripped over and they pushed it, and it rolled down a hill. And they thought, "Oh, round things roll." So that might be how it happened as well. Now we do need to just uh, attach a seat and we can give 
Jason a lift home from his dad's in 2,000 years. Cartwheels were often painted to protect them from the elements. Okay, that makes sense, doesn't it? And that's why we paint fences, isn't it? Or put creosote and stuff in, I say we, people. Creosote fences. And then you've got steam engines used flywheels to stabilize energy output. The gyroscope. What's a gyroscope? A gyroscope? Yeah. Is that a gyroscope? Isn't that something you, you listen to heartbeat with? Or is that what you use to find your way when you're in a jungle? No, that's a map. The Wheel of Fortune is a concept from ancient mythology symbolizing fate. I thought it was a TV program. The tread pattern on a tire helps provide traction on various surfaces. Oh, that's good. Really? It makes sense though, wouldn't it? If there was some kind of, you know, like we have trains, but doing it the other way. So I don't know. In order to keep a car on the same trajectory, have it on a track but instead of one big long or two big long metal rails have lots of short ones and dents in the tires so it stays in those grooves as it turns staying in the same place or staying on the same track instead of giving people choice to move whichever they whichever way they want. Uh, perhaps it wouldn't work. Early bicycles were called velocipedes and had large front wheels. Veloci velocipedes. Velocipedes? Oh. The penny farthing was an early bicycle with a massive front wheel and small rear wheel. So that was also silly, but at least it had two wheels. Wheels are fundamental to modern roller skates and skateboards. Again, we can go down that route, can't we? Wheels are fundamental to the chair I sit on because it's got wheels on it. Wheels are fundamental to the oven in the kitchen because it's got wheels on it. Wheels are fundamental I'm trying to think of something else with wheels to um oh my dressing table or like my you know set of drawers because it's got wheels on it i mean that, that sentence could be used so many times why why focus on skateboards it's just like saying without wheels skateboarding would be really boring or even more boring to watch uh the word roundabout refers to circular traffic intersections with a wheel-like pattern. Okay. Well, I know what a roundabout is. I'm just a roundabout Drifting from town to town No one can hold me down I'm just a roundabout guy See? 
I know my songs. The golden wheel is a symbol of Buddhist teaching. Well, they have a wheel of life in Buddhism. And, yeah, that's, it. that's more, more, I think, what they're talking about there. The wheel of life. And rotary wheels are key components in clock, clock, cock, clock mechanisms. Rotary wheels. See, that's really what an amazing invention rotary wheels were. Because it's set, it's just all industry made use of them, didn't it? It's just phenomenal, including clocks. The first, the first horse-drawn carts appeared around 3000 BCE. Says who? Name one person that was around. No one. I'm less round than I used to be. Inventions like the spinning wheel revolutionised textile productions. Okay. Wheels are integral to modern robotics and mobility devices. Here's one. It trolley wheels are designed for durability in urban environments. Um, well, it wouldn't be designed for durability on a mountain top or in a coal mile, coal mile, coal mine. In urban environment, where else would a trolley wheel be used if not in an urban environment? I suppose hospitals. The invention of the wheel led to the construction of early roads. You probably didn't need roads, did we, if we didn't have cars or horse and carts? We just needed pavements. Yeah. That's like saying uh, the invention of television led to the uh, led to Netflix, but obviously, if there was no television, Netflix wouldn't have happened. Well, television, the internet, computers, and all that stuff, you know. Solid rubber tires were used before pneumatic tires. So, why are you telling me that? I don't want to know that. Why are you telling me? Spinning wheels were vital for making thread in pre-industrial societies. Rumple stilt skin, rumple stilt skin. Me, 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 me. Wow, spinning wheels. Never, never had a spinning wheel. That was an amazing invention as well, wasn't it? So treadless wheels are used for racing on smooth tracks. Okay, that's a bit of useless information. Wheel alignment is crucial for vehicle performance and safety. Okay, great. Hoverboards, though wheel less, Often include rolling wheels for propulsion. Oh. The wheel of time is a recurring motif in philosophy and literature. Roller coasters often rely on precision wheels to maintain speed and control okay oh look at this the cartwheel is both a gymnastic move and and you ready 
a type of wheel design. <gasps> wagon, wagon, wagon wheels are all in. Do you remember wagon wheels, anyone? Do you ever used to eat wagon wheels? They used to be huge. Used to be bigger than my head. Now, tiny. You never used to be able to fit one in your mouth. Used to be huge. And that was part of the thing. Because they were actually the size of wagon wheels. Not anymore. Right, I need to let that one go. That's just been bugging me for about 30 years. Alloy wheels are a popular choice for modern vehicles due to their lightweight nature. Rims are the outer edge of a wheel that hold the tyre in place. No, it's the inside of the wheel. It's on the outside of the wheel, it's the inside of the wheel, the rim. Is the outer edge of the ring of the inside, isn't it? Not the outside. The outside edge of a wheel wheel is the tire itself, where the treads are. Even I know that. Early wheels were often carved by hand, making each one unique. Hmm. Car wheels often have decorative hubcaps. Yeah, I know. Never really understood that. Continuous tracks, like those on tanks, are an adaption of wheel technology. I mean, that's kind of what I was saying earlier, wasn't it? I guess that would be the kind of thing that I would have. But instead of being on a a tank it'd be just on the floor just one track which you would go into and I suppose a little bit like Morse code or those do you remember those things for kids where you used to be able to put a record on and it had holes in and it'd make a tune from those holes it'd be a bit like that but nothing like that Wheels have been used in toys for thousands of years. Oh. The spoke tension in bicycle wheels is key to maintaining their shape. Blimey, tell me about that. I know that. If you mess up with the spokes, the, the tyre goes in a weird, a weird direction, a weird shape. Carts with wheels were used to build ancient structures like Stonehenge. You don't know that? Why Why say it if you don't know it? They don't know that. They don't know how Stonehenge was built. There's no proof. There's no photographs. It was magic. So there. The earliest known depiction of a wheel is from a clay pot in Mesopotamia, which is I think it's near Phoenix. The Indian Ashoka Chakra is a symbolic wheel found on the national flag. Ah. Flywheels store rotational energy and are used in engines I've got no what I don't know what a flywheel is car wheels with hollow centers were designed to reduce weight and to entertain people at the Olympics um, Roman roads were specifically engineered for wheeled transport why else would you build a road if not for wheeled transport I actually, okay, people used to drive and used to ride on cows and chickens and stuff, didn't they? And horses and giraffes. Tires for wheels were made from leather before rubber was introduced. I wonder if everything that used rubber was originally... Yeah, maybe it was... Everything... 
was originally leather that then became rubber. That's what I mean. Yeah. Some wheels are equipped with sensors for anti-lock braking systems. Yep, ABS, I know about that. The invention of the wheel led to the use of pulleys and cranes. Yeah, that's phenomenal, isn't it? Really. Not that I've ever used... I've never used a pulley. I've never had to. But I imagine they were very useful. Modern wheels often include alumu aluminium. It's not aluminium. It's not aluminium. It's aluminium. That's the correct way. Just I like to educate as well. So let's have a look. Modern wheels often used aluminium or steel for added durability. And iron, even though it's spelled I-R-O-N, and I heard someone, one of the, honestly, I couldn't believe this, they actually talked about Mike Tyson. This is one of the, the commentators on the fight he had at the weekend. Called him Iron, Iron Mike. No, Iron Mike. Iron I need to iron the clothes. No, you don't need to iron the clothes. Iron. The R is silent. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Constantly learning, constantly teaching. Wagon wheels were often greased to reduce friction. I used to cease to eat them, as they were. Tractors use large rear wheels for better traction in fields. That's why. Oh. You know you know how much time I've spent thinking about that over the years? None. So high performance racing cars use slick tyres for maximum contact with the road. Yeah, cool. Roller coaster wheels are designed to grip rails securely at high speeds. I like to think so. The spinning motion of wheels inspired early ideas of perpetual motion machines. Yep. That's still a dream of mine. Windmills use a wheel-like mechanism to generate energy. The Wheel of Fortune is a long-running American game show. I know that. The invention of the wheel facilitated... The invention of the wheel facilitated urbanization and civilization growth. Can't argue on that one. Wheels on modern luggage make travel more convenient. Yeah, I didn't realise how... Uh, are airports bigger now than they used to be? Because I, I don't remember having to walk for days just to get from one end of the airport to the other. You need wheels... You you need wheels underneath your feet. It's ridiculous. I mean, you've got those escalators that just go sideways. Not up or down, but just, just go flat. Because it's such a long way. And you know it's a long way when no one's walking. Because usually those things, they don't, they don't go far and people just walk along them. You just, most people just stand because it's, it's like you're in there for, for like a week. Wheels, okay, self-driving cars rely on wheels equipped with sensors and motors. Okay, good. The wheel is often seen as a metaphor for bro progress and innovation. Ooh. Ooh, progress and innovation. Ooh. So, I don't know 
I think that's kind of all I've got. I'm afraid. That's all I've got. So that's all the Q and A. Q and A. Wow, I'm heading heading forward a little bit in the week. Trivia Tuesday is now complete. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I just listen to it over and over again, like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again. And it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily 
listening to her words because I had them memorized really it was as if my body knew exactly what to do and the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down now now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade maybe not solidly obviously not 24 hours a day but maybe people come back some people maybe listen every day and something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say so if I said to you focus on your feet notice your feet relaxing I will be focusing on my feet I will be noticing my feet relaxing and if I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. And 
you may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now and as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Was it snoring or was a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, 
never been able to notice the ease in which Breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. My breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed. I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. Peaceful. Completely. Un 
attached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. completely free noticing that Your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part. of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs
the feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepening each part of your body further and deeper. Soon, the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Focus on your mind. Your mind becomes even slower. So 
a very slow in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Your elbows, 
feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers, all the way to your lower back. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more
joy. The space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. to notice the forehead and your eyes So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace.
gentle pace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and 
and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And to give yourself a rest. Giving yourself permission to take some time off. And to allow your body to relax. And allow your mind to slow down. Which in turn releases the tension, any stresses that you had in your body. It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy. Which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, 
you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. Just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing. Completely moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focus 
focusing on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before. And enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. Down to your lower back. And as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine Relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back, as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling. of comfort that spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go Focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose, they're already feeling feel 
these muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. so soft and gentle, so smooth, and calm, and the feeling shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation not just traveling deeply into your muscles but also relaxing bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing. so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message into your You may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so light and gentle. Focus.
exhale. sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar tips to 
muscles in your thighs. Your knees. Muscles and your shins completely
I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps, and each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
eight. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. 
your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that Focusing on your eyes, you're going to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now, ten.
cuerpo. So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from ten to one. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? I could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time are you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down or just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The 
gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, ten, nine, Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. It may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some. TLC, a bit of love shown, a bit of acknowledgement, a thank you, gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. You can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe notice that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, they didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realize now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries, there's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. It's very, it feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. The same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And then when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having the love in your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in your bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles, the strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are, truly a gift, because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight Regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight in these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, my feet also go. And my toes clap. I'm so happy. And I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, but they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five, One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more 
the mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each.
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing sensation of letting go completely and this time I'm going to count from six down to one Notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful. slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are 
the sun thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. thoughts, sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. with number seven.
changing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands, nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that, it's just noticing and focusing on your Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. your hands and fingers, becoming even more relaxing with each new 
Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. real 
sense of peacefulness which comes to you very quickly because ultimately it's just you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you where you're not trying to please anybody else ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself. Appreciate sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life it's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something's changed deep within you.
maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including of course your ability to relax so much easier when sleeping is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally you were born with that ability to just drift to a deep healing sleep and even when we're kids sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to we try to <laughs> stay awake maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to we don't want to go to sleep the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting to sleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy to let go, because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go, and when you pray 
press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words. Positive, only a positive way, opening up your mind to useful. suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity will disappear. And 
that you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des- doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. For now, twenty.
this is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs and 
inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair in your body is filled with relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that your mind starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, you're not in no stance to drift, listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission to your body and your mind, in fact, you give the command to your body and drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on different parts of your body, and you may find yourself drifting, but you won't realize you drift off until you stop drifting, and you get vertigo from your voice focusing on that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep and that's the last you remember 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. you focus on both of your hands now, and then they seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if it's mixed together. Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
letting go. go of everything everything I'm going to stop now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, and you feel comfortable, and the breathing is really easy, and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I want to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the, the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe. And it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. Both hands. 
this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm as a massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck which would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck. And massaging the, the back of your neck. Especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders, that muscly area, starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders and the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you Just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, really 
get into those muscles and let your fingers in there and you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial for the relaxation. the muscles in your shoulders. And now we move down your arms. We do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you, that way it'll still be attached, and I just massage the tops of your arms, all the way down to your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm. leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's a much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. right hand, just holding your hand in both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. same time, pressing down and massaging each finger, and then starting to massage the palms of your hand, just turning the hand gently stretching it gently, and actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles 
you are all the way down to your wrist, stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers. Massaging the palm of your left hand. And it feels so, so relaxing. So comforting. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back. The biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again with a little bit in top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards, making a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside Massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back. The parts where your arms would maybe rest against. Almost that connects your front to your back. And just massaging down firmly but gently as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving down again, being very gentle, and yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. do that a few times. Sometimes people would use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up your body, stretching your body, so that you feel more relaxed, but at the same time, rejuvenated. Now I'm going to move 
to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side to the middle in fact to where your spine is massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing it's almost like kneading bread there's that big area which is there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part where you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body do the same with the opposite part of your lower back, kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. But it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach is being stretched even though you're in your stomach now you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach now we're going to move we'll move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same this time Starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. Feels all connected. Your chest and your back connect together. And we're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area from your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move 
down a bit and I continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower your middle of your back to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. And then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. And the back of your back of your ankles. Just gently massaging that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet, gently but firm enough so you don't tickle, and just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, your sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes 
with my fingers, each one individually. I'm moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting on the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving from down to your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feels really Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up, I can clean my hands, make them all fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows, and just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, your chin. moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, through the 
side of the collarbone. And just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. side to the next, moving the head underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. and moving down again. And then allowing my hands to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach. Starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart. Massaging and sliding at the same time. Moving down. To just below your rib cage. Massaging up again, giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. Remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, and just below your arms, all the way down to your hips. to your stomach area, I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back, I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side, gently massaging side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button, I'm going to move round to the other side of you and repeat that. of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now I'm 
inside your stomach, the front of your stomach, and in circles around the belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them, I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeper those muscles in your thighs, in front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin. Gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet, and then with each foot and each hand. Massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. So many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deeply relaxed. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down, all the way down to one, and each time I say a number. Can 
watching that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just this is not a big blow, it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish. say the next number and move down and you can just blow that one out as well and as we move down the numbers you'll find yourself even more and more relaxed as you moved to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's a forest the pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes and there's the odd plane that goes by seems important whatsoever. seem to 
energy so simple and we're going to start by introducing the first Positivity grow within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding.
सकते हैं
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind. And your mind starts to slow down. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, when you give the say so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like a, a breath of relief. Oh, yeah, that's when I relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and that oh, feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful. Just by sitting there like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind feels prepared to let go of everything. stress of your body to evaporate, and the tensions can just 
just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go and to rejoin and relax and then see more and more as failure. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. almost like a literal unwinding it's why you press a button and all the tension just releases it's like a wheel like a cog like even so as a clock just unwinding and then it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper, seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and then it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed we're not, we're not actually being aware of what we need, whether it's physically or emotionally, to need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, feels so nice 
breathing out any excess feelings and tensions just in every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are coming to a standstill your mind is not really moving and listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body, and that synchronicity between the relaxation of your mind lets you know you're feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed. It really is a great calming experience for you. body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind, even your bones. side of your scalp where it moves, it can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to relax, you send necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, concentrated
this ever increasing sensation of comfort that is spreading throughout your body. Relaxing each and every muscle of your body. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from the discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to 
things touch. You can actually feel in this moment. So let's start off by focusing to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, opening and closing your hands very gently, just so that you can be in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning on your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. Focusing now on your eyes, I invite you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscles, the changes. raising your eyebrows as it stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with the inner aspects. Focusing on your thighs. And I just ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. And noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, your jaws and your shoulders, and as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe we can move your head gently upwards if you're looking up, maybe moving your head down 
sensations as a group, sensations of how back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your ears, the palms and the biceps and the triceps and the between the elbow and the shoulders. As you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and then like it is tensely, but very, very gently and slowly. So you're slowly putting any whatsoever on your hands, it's just a silver ether, very aware of the sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment, and you're just noticing above your forehead, and being able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. Difficult thing to do. 
to include the size of the problem, which was not so easy. Very much easier. It was not so easy to have some room in it to uh, prepare carefully to put it.
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretched It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. make up the larger movements, which is always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And This space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you feelings in your arms instead of feeling the whole of the arm maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of the arms, the all the internal parts of the arms, the veins, Bones. 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling. Maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation. forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. May not feel like anything other than just feeling like it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. Course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back. And of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, and I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently. seem to happen, the feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. Hands along. Just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now.
so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to a chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. And of course if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different well mine aren't that different these days but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest but at the side and underneath pretty much the same whether you're a man or a woman there's muscles there muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest. So I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. And then it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels... It feels okay. little bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas back it looks quite nice actually the good thing about this is you can if you want to you can just flex various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing and you do tense a muscle and then you let it go it relaxes way more than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. And if you ain't doing it, 
face or uh, your shoes with the pale paw of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself. Notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. You have nothing to think about. You're just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slowly down, as your body to feel your body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving them there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, and that's that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free, and continue. 
listening to my voice as the mind started to imagine something different my being started to almost move into some other unknown state and when you become aware of your voice again and even though you know 
physical sensation. Most life is a magnet outside of your head, sucking the tension and stress This is something that you can do yourself in your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just count.
missing any physical thing. I don't think now it's twenty three to one. focus on the fingertips, I'm going to feel a little bit tingly, which is not what I intend, and it's something I'm conscious of of when I'm exiting my body through the fingertips. So now I'm going to turn to my pointer bow again, again, this time stress and the anxiety that you might have, breathing in through your stomach, just breathing through your stomach, it's almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach and your navel through this abdominal cleanse of the lower chest surrounded in your body that area and the whole area you can feel the tension of your body what is left just releasing from that area and you may notice that your stomach is a bit more relaxed as that area is pointing little scan of your body noticing your body feels noticing how your upper body your chest stomach legs and arms feel just noticing sense of tiredness 
you to make up your mind who you're going to marry next and I want to explore that with you what it feels like when you actually decide who you're going to marry next not forcing yourself but giving yourself it is a command really isn't it when I'm telling myself that I'm just going to be a bit firm here that only you can really tell yourself in that way I can't be have selling my soul to you and relax relax you know um, I need to be gentle but you can't someone else can't really have the same test it out. You can have little tests, do little tests along the way and you can get more of an idea of the thoughts, the positive thoughts that you could have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind. And that could be just by
to start by just just focusing your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. And I think if you actually do it directly focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying now with that little ears that you have there. So talking to your hands and just say relax. focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So just saying the same word, relax. Now find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax. For you, you might say relax or relax. You know, you, you might say it differently for yourself. It's important for you to go with the right tone. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, you can also do your eye, your eyes, your eyebrows, and just tell your eyes that they are repeat that yourself now. Sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time or a bit of chance to relax and you just start talking to your eyes and maybe you tend to think that you need to fill it and what would happen is that you would just kind of relax and develop that to notice is when you start focusing on your eyes do you actually you know think can I do that worse before they get better can I feel that I've got a bit more tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing so the thought to get done there really is just me becoming more aware of the tension that is already there focusing on that tension by really acknowledging it or by really actually feeling it, feeling it. have got a certain kind of energy about them, they're quite buzzy and quite kind of feeling full of energy about them. And you might find it quite hard to let them go. And you might find them not focus on the back of the neck. That's a part that quite often um, is for me I tend to think about I don't feel as though um, I've got quite a, a standard place where I'm tension when something is going. So and I'm, I'm doing it for 
something I want you to do is you go to Acts 17, 9, 35, and 38. If you pull your hair out, don't pull it out. Wait till someone else will read it for you. So, here it is. Remember, when you pray, you work with us. Let the same God who is at the center of this meeting come through to you. Let your faith be so profound Thank you. 
presence here. This time, can you focus on the Holy Deputy within your heart, within your life? Just notice how his little voice starts to feel notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even bad and you can bring your mind back into the moment it's that space So there's that gap of calmness, that gap of relaxation. So now feel it. It moves very sweaty or discomfort physically or emotionally. Notice 